Hey everyone, welcome back to our beginner series where we're sketching on a pair of headphones within Gravity Sketch. Last time we created these rough sketches and today we're going to take a look at how to go over top of these with a bit more precision and come up with a cleaner sketch. I like where we ended up with our fourth concept so we're going to use this as a kicking off point for refinement. You'll remember last time I set up some different layers, so if I go back to my menu I can lower the opacity on my rough sketch layer and lock that. I'll also set my refined sketch layer to active and use this to sketch over top of. I'll go to my brush menu now and go down to the stroke tool and set that input to point mode. Point mode is a really powerful tool here within Gravity Sketch. Think of it like creating a vector line in Illustrator. While the ink tool is fast and rough, the stroke tool allows me to click independently with my drawing hand index trigger to make new points. When I'm happy with the stroke, I just click my non-drawing hand index trigger to finish it. If I edit that object and go into settings, I can turn on loop, which means that the first point and the last point form a solid connection, making it one single enclosed object. And I can go through and edit these points, and because I use point mode, I don't have an abundance of unnecessary vertices to edit and manipulate. Using point stroke tool is a really good way to go over top of a rough sketch and just get that next level of refinement. Once I'm happy with this specific stroke form, I can exit edit mode, go back, grab, and manipulate that same stroke to make it larger in the exact same form, just echoing outward. I'm a big proponent of reusing assets that you've already created. So in this case, that stroke echoes inward and is a really good representation of the rest of this form that I wanted to make. So there's no reason for me to recreate that stroke for each of these outer edges. Even in this case, you'll notice I have another pill shape that's not enclosed, so I turn off loop mode, copy that shape outward, and resize it to be where the rest of my pill shape is going to exist. But it's important to remember that just because this is a refined version of an underlaid sketch doesn't mean I can't continually change and iterate on it. Part of the iterative process is doing this refinement as you're creating a refined version of an underlaid sketch. So I'm gonna go through here and kind of continue to, to play with this and manipulate it and make sure that it's exactly what I want. In this case, that means opening the end of that echoed form and making sure that it kind of continues upward and outward so that the band that goes across the top of the head has some physical place to live. And I'm thinking about that transition and translation between those 3D forms. And now's a pretty good time to call out point density. You'll notice where my points are closer together, there's more uh, kind of pinching and more transition that's happening in that stroke, whereas the further apart my points are, the smoother that overall stroke is. So for this band around the top, I'm only using three points, but down there near the base of the rest of that form, I might have three points right next to each other to make sure that that actual stroke is, is pinching and creating an edge. And already the sketch is looking like a more refined version of the one I have as an underlay. I can turn that all the way off and I might also turn off the world axis here because now that I have context, it's not as necessary. But one of the things that I'm seeing here is the thickness of this line. If I go into edit mode, that graph on the right side of my menu is actually the thickness of the stroke. So by moving that dot around that graph, you can change the thickness. This line weight is something that's important when we're talking about visualization, whether we're in 2D or 3D. Uh, it'll stay consistent, but it is a pretty cool tip to show how you can make your sketches look better by playing with that line weight. And we've been talking about this sketch as just that, a sketch this whole time. But in reality, this is 3D, so it's almost like a wireframe blueprint that we're going to come back and surface over top of. So what I'm doing here is just creating some cross-section lines that will inform my surfacing when I come back later on. I know that I want that cross-section to be consistent throughout this whole band of the form, so I'm just duplicating that cross-section and moving it to the right location. I also want to make sure that I'm giving thickness to my various objects and thinking about that actual 3D volume that it's going to take up. So here I'm just duplicating that band inward, playing around with some of those points, I might move them as I'm thinking about the thickness varying in that band as it wraps around the head. But I already am starting to get a pretty solid piece of, of blueprint wireframe line work here that I'll be able to come back later on and reliably uh, surface out and, and kind of continue this design intent forward. I can use all of these same tools to come back in and kind of create those little details, think about 
materials splits, how surfaces may transition, and just build that in now while I'm doing the ideation process so that later on I know where that's going to exist. You can get as detailed as you want in adding these little features, especially knowing that when I come back in and surface later or if I'm going to take screenshots to export, the more detail that I have here, the more realistic this sketch is going to appear. But there will come a point when you have enough geometry in the room that the head is distracting. So if I go back to the layer, I can turn the opacity on that down to make sure I can actually see my object and continue ideating on those parts that wouldn't be super visible with the head in the way. But once I'm done with that refined overlay sketch, I can go back in, unlock my rough sketch, and lock my new sketch so that I can move the old sketch out of the way and refer to them one to the other. This means that I can now evaluate the changes that I've made during that refinement process. And creating this cleaner sketch may seem a little bit redundant at first. I already have that rough sketch. Why wouldn't I hop straight into surfacing? I absolutely could. We have a lot of users that do that exact process. Personally, I like to make sure that I have a very clear path moving forward for that next stage of surfacing. So I'm not wasting time and I'm not making too many additional decisions at that point. I'm just focusing on execution at that stage. But to recap what we've done up to this point, we started with our rough sketches, kind of decided one we wanted to move forward with, and then created a refined version of that. What we're going to be doing next is some rough quick surfacing, and then after that we'll be moving into a more advanced tutorial showing how you can get very clean surfacing. But for now, this is what we're left with. This is our concept that we're going to have moving forward. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.